space. Many consider this to mankind's final frontier, but is it really? Only recently have we begun to consider the frontiers we have yet to explore on a much smaller scale. In 1959, Richard Feynman gave a lecture titled, There's Plenty of Room at the Bottom. This lecture really opened the door on giving the correct attention to the microscale. There are universes potentially in every grain of sand, invisible forces that hold us and our universe together. The cell, it is the smallest unit of all living matter. All plants and animals are made up of cells. Cells are made up of atoms, which are the smallest currently known units of matter. Each cell contains a cell membrane. Our journey of discovery leads us to go over the fluid mosaic model. This is one of the basic components of the fluid mosaic model, the lipid molecule. These lipid molecules assemble to form the cell membrane. Lipid molecules naturally assemble because their heads attract water, while their tails repel it. Because their heads and tails react this way, they are able to form a cell membrane. As the video below demonstrates, you will never find a head and a tail next to each other, or a tail on top of a head. Cholesterol is the name of a steroid medical light and is found in the cell membrane. It helps to build and maintain the membrane and to regulate fluidity. On top of the membrane, we have the glycoprotein. Glycoproteins are proteins that contain attached sugar units. We also have the glycolipids. They provide energy and surface markers for cellular recognition. Next, we have integral proteins. These are permanently attached to the plasma membrane. Their functions vary. Some are used for structure support while others move things in and out of the cell wall. Peripheral proteins are proteins that are attached for only a short time to the membrane. Carbohydrates are tiny tree-like structures also found on top of the cell membrane. They are needed for cells to communicate and stick to each other. Over the membrane, we have the extracellular matrix, which helps to support the cell and separate them from one another. These also help in cell growth and healing. The microfilaments of the cytoskeleton are the thinnest filaments of the cytoskeleton and serve also as a structural support. Passive transport, as the name implies, it requires no energy. Here we see oxygen and water moving in and out of the cell membrane. This is passive because no work is done by the cell membrane. Things are just flowing in and out. Some things cannot pass through the cell membrane without energy being used. In this example, we have potassium and sodium ions trying to get in and out of the cell membrane. So how will these be allowed to pass through? With active transport. Here we have what is called the sodium-potassium pump. AET attaches to the pump to give it needed energy to form a holder for the potassium ion so it can move this to the inner cell membrane. Once it releases the potassium ion, it forms the other holder for the sodium on the inside of the cell membrane and releases it to the outer cell membrane. Plasma membrane, lipid molecules, glycolipids, glycoproteins, cholesterol, integral and peripheral proteins, carbohydrates, ECM, microfilaments, passive transport, and carrier proteins, active transport, and potassium pumps. All this activity going on in a single cell, and this isn't even all the activity that goes on. There's a large portion of the microverse that we still have left to explore the final frontier within their own cells. 